Hi everybody, welcome back. Today we're gonna take a quick tour through TrueNAS and take a look at the Cloud Sync options. For our example today, we're gonna be using Amazon S3 as our target. If you haven't used S3, Amazon has a whole business division called AWS, Amazon Web Services, and one of their core services is an object storage service where you can host and store huge amounts of data, and it's relatively inexpensive. Even for home lab users, it's pretty cheap. We're gonna step through what I pay to back up about a terabyte of data every month in a place that I know it's secure, it's durable, it really doesn't cost me much and it's pretty good peace of mind. It's definitely cheaper even than running the electricity on a second TrueNAS server located somewhere else. Now, sometimes we like to do things just to do them, but this is a good way to make sure your data stays durable if you would like to back it up to the cloud and you can put it somewhere that's trusted, it's encrypted in flight, it's encrypted at rest, it's actually double encrypted because we're encrypting it with TrueNAS and then Amazon is encrypting it again at rest. It's really secure, it's safe, so. Let's step through it. So in TrueNAS, there's two pieces to set this up for a cloud sync task. First thing we need to do is give it some credentials. So if you go to system, scroll down to cloud credentials, and you're gonna add in a new cloud credential. You give it a name and you'll choose the provider. For this example, we're gonna use Amazon S3, but if you scroll this list, you'll see there is a whole list of different providers that are usable for this, including some generic ones like FTP and SFTP, things like that. Google Drive, Dropbox, Azure Blob Storage, Hubic, what's, what's Hubic? Never heard of that one. Okay, so we're gonna use S3. I'd like to point out that this is also S3 compatible. So if you're using a S3 compatible storage like Minio, which is a service built into TrueNAS, you could use another TrueNAS server as your S3 target. So you can host your own S3 service if you wanted to. You use this same plugin for that. So you'll give it your application key ID. You're gonna create that in your AWS account. You're gonna give it full access to S3. You'll plug in that key ID, the secret, and you can go under advanced settings if you'd like, just to take a look at what's under there. Nothing we're doing if you're using AWS is gonna to need to change in here. This is where if you were targeting a S3 compatible service, like Minio, you'd plug in that endpoint URL and you would disable endpoint region because you don't want it to auto detect a region. There's nothing out there. So once you create that, you'll end up with something that looks like this. And next we need to set up our cloud sync job. For that, go to tasks, go to cloud sync tasks. And I have three here already that I'm using actively. Let's just take a look. How about my next cloud data? So this is again, pretty straightforward as far as your defaults. It's gonna be a push direction. You have a couple different transfer mode options. We're using sync. That means uh, anything that changes is gonna sync up to the cloud. If you delete something, it's gonna delete off of there. Copy versus move. We, you're probably never gonna use move. We're not using this as a data mover. Uh, copy could be good too, though. That means you're gonna copy stuff up there, but things that are deleted are not gonna get deleted on the target. That might be a use case depending on what you're doing. I prefer sync for my use case. You'll of course give it the path on your local TrueNAS server. And then for the remote side, you'll choose your S3 storage. You'll have a bucket on the target side and it'll find that since you've given it credentials to your AWS, it'll find your bucket and you do need to give it a subfolder. It won't let you write straight to the root and that's okay, that's pretty good for organization anyway. Finally, you're going to set a schedule. So this is the, a cron job time of day. You'll probably run this once a day. You can run it more often if you like. You'll enable it. I also recommend you make sure you're taking a snapshot. So this is gonna give you that ZFS snapshot point in time so you know your file system is consistent when it starts doing that job because that job could take a while. And then encryption, this is important too. Give it AES-256. You wanna do remote encryption, file name encryption. Go ahead and give it a encryption password and a salt. So that's sort of like a password, but not really salting the way hashing works. You can also throttle it if you'd like. If you wanna make sure that it doesn't just kill your upstream on your internet, sometimes that's good too. You'd rather it run for a few days than to just destroy your outbound bandwidth for a couple hours. That's my preference. And then go ahead and save it. Now with that done, hit dry run. It'll just verify both of the endpoints, make sure it can read the source, that it can write to the destination, and that way it's ready to run on that next interval. I'm gonna go ahead and run it so you can see what happens. There we have it, it's running. Why don't we pop over to my PFSense firewall in my WAN interface. 
I'm seeing that outbound traffic. I'm seeing a one megabit outbound stream. I know because this is my lab that there's nothing else going on. That is indeed that traffic streaming out to S3. Good deal. That'll take a while to run depending on how large your data set is. You can keep an eye on that. Also, if we go back to TrueNAS and we click on that running icon, we'll see the status of that task, which can be really handy. See how much data we're actually moving, how fast it's moving, how long it might take. Let's go take a look over at S3 in AWS and see what we have. Now, I've got a couple things that I'm synchronizing already. If you check this box on the left side here and go to actions and say calculate total size, this is gonna read those S3 buckets to see how much data is in them. Once that's done calculating, we can see for me, I have just under a terabyte that I'm storing in S3. Now, what is that costing me? That's always gonna be the big question with cloud services, concern that you're gonna get a huge bill. Well, let's take a look at the cost management. It's definitely worthwhile to get familiar with the cost explorer if you're doing a lot of things in AWS. I've gone in here, I've filtered my cost by month and just the S3 service. And we can see month over month in the past six months, my highest month ever, I paid $7.74 for S3 storage. And last month it was down, I must have removed some stuff, it's only at $4. So this is a really cost effective solution. Like I said, this is cheaper than running the electricity on a second TrueNAS server somewhere else just to mirror your data. It's certainly something to consider. Now, I do a few different things just because I like to tinker in the home lab. I synchronize to another TrueNAS server. I use S3 to make sure my data is backed up. But guys, this is a really good way to back up your data with a really cost-effective, durable storage method. Check this out. Let me know if you have any comments or questions. There's also some other things you can do in this if you want to reduce costs even more using things like Glacier and Glacier Deep Archive but there's some gotchas with that. So I hope you found this valuable. Cloud Sync using AWS S3 as your encrypted target, very cost effective, and give you that peace of mind that your data is backed up and secure. Thanks for watching. If you found this valuable, give me a thumbs up. If you're not already, please subscribe, hit that notification bell, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.